Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the weekly market review for the week ending May 31st, 2024. The month of May is over, and we are going to be heading into June, and uh, it's the time of year where the traditional maxim is sell in May, go away. We'll see if that is what people actually do, if that's even a smart move. Uh, we'll see in a couple of months once we get to the end uh, of the summer and past Labor Day. A lot of things can happen. It's an election year. There's a lot of wild stuff going on. And the question is, where are we at? And where are markets likely to head? And we'll jump into it in just a second. Before we do, I want to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mr. J. Thomason. And you can follow my free weekly newsletter at BeFinanciallyFree.Substack.com. And the links to both my... Twitter account and my Substack are in the description of the video below. And so, I don't know if you could tell in my voice, I'm actually really bewildered. <laughs> this is one of those things, uh, you know, you don't always get to understand everything. You, a lot of things don't always make sense. Uh, but the markets just had a rip-roaring rally uh, to, to end the session. Uh, and essentially, markets have been uh, intraday moving up since... Uh, See, it's I'm on the Pacific time zone, so about close to 9:30, so it's about 12:30 Eastern time uh, in the United States, and uh, they they started recovering from lows of the day uh, and kind of were grinding up throughout the day, went sideways a bit, up a little bit, and then in the last 20 minutes, I mean, if we look uh, here on uh, SPY, if we just go from 12:40 until the uh, through the last minute, um, I don't even think I can see this. It was uh, almost a whole percent uh, on SPY, nearly five full points. If you look at that on the futures, uh, if you go, I'm not looking at the futures right now, but if you were looking at the futures, or I'm sorry, on SPY from the low to the high, uh, it was 1.74%. Um, and uh, I was talking about the futures earlier. If you were to have looked at this uh, via the futures, uh, or the S&P 500 index at the index level, uh, S&P was down about 50 points at its lows, and now it's closing up near 50 points up, uh, about 47.25 as we speak on the futures. And uh, so essentially intraday movement of 100 points uh, on the S&P, it's just wild. And uh, it's, it's hard to tell. There's not, I mean, th there's different places that I look sometimes when there are some crazy market moves um, to try to uh, quantify and to try to think about how these things happened. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of updates yet, so uh, I'm not really sure this could be zero DTE related. Um, th there's It's the end of the month, so uh, there's uh, a lot of rebalancing and window dressing uh, that can happen towards the end of the month, so I'm not really sure. Uh, if uh, We're at T plus one now starting this week. I think it's, it's T plus one. Uh, so trade plus one day settlement. So I'm not sure if that makes a difference uh, when it comes to uh, uh, if, if that makes a difference between if everybody would have rebalanced or bought or sold or whatever yesterday versus today. Uh, but it's just very interesting uh, to see this kind of price action. Actually, uh, I was on a live stream and you know interacting with some different people uh, kind of earlier in the morning where we were talking about how interesting it was that uh, S&P was down and, and risk assets across the board were down um, uh, for much of the day. Um, and um, what was interesting about that is uh, people were trying to come up with reasons why uh, price was where it was. So if I just pull, let me go to the futures. That's what I typically look at. Um, so, uh, you know, we were nearly unchanged. We had kind of started... Um, you know, yesterday's uh, going from yesterday, uh, the close of the futures into the overnight hours, we were down a bit and then we kind of recovered uh, prior to uh, 530 or 830 Eastern time this morning when the PCE was released. PCE came out, markets bounced, uh, kind of started to fail, bounced again, didn't uh, break that intraday high. Uh, and then started to sell off from there. And that's actually interesting because I have been t I was talking about this the last few days, uh, that it was pretty clear to me that the market would bounce on the PCE um, because 
uh, kind of the, the the Fed is capped. I would maybe we would say. Um, and any piece of information that shows softening is going to lead to an equity rally. And I was saying that the question was, would that rally hold? And, uh, and this is what makes, and I'm spending a lot of time talking about today, because that's what makes today's price action so interesting, because um, it bounced and then fell, bounced and failed to reach a new high. A lot of times when, uh, when the inflation data or any sort of economic data is favorable and markets like it and if usually like in bull markets and things like that then what will happen is you'll get that pop and then the price action will kind of move sideways a bit and then it'll just keep grinding higher uh, but it didn't do that today and the reason that i thought that was a big deal uh, was because if you go back to let me go do this really quick um, if you go back to what's happened uh, over the last week and a half like last week on thursday we had nvidia up 10% and the market closed down huge is a huge reversal candle. Um, and maybe this should arguably, I don't know why my indicator isn't uh, marking it, but this technically should be a uh, an outside reversal candle. Uh, and, and I usually take outside reversal candles pretty seriously. Uh, they are really, really important um, to, to pay attention to. They send a really important signal um, in markets. So uh, so it's hard to tell what to uh, what exactly to make of this um, at this particular juncture, um, but uh, but in any case, um, the what I I saw that, and then we obviously had the price action uh, Wednesday and yesterday, uh, which was suggesting that there was some uh, uh, difficulty ahead for markets. Um, and then just with the failure today, the the initial failure in uh, following the PCE release, uh, to me it was showing all the signs of uh, trouble ahead for markets. Um, they, I, I was thinking this was going to send another really strong signal that assets were going to uh, head lower. Um, and they did for a couple hours. Um, essentially, after that failure around 6.45, 9.45 Eastern time this morning, uh, it sold off uh, for about two and a half hours and then started to recover. And I remember thinking it was an interesting recovery because, you know, going from the bottom to kind of where I, where I was paying attention to it, it's about a half a percent change in about an hour. Um, so I remember thinking that was a pretty big deal, but uh, then I was wondering if it was going to fail and then it didn't fail. It actually curled back up. And then again, that last 20 minutes was just like a rocket uh, to the upside. Um, and so obviously that's a uh, that's a that's a really big deal that that took place. So uh, so it kind of throws you know a little wrench into things because if you, if you look at the the chart here, um, you know we had the reversal day, so that is going to be the high that needs to be taken out in order for uh, this to be the sell impulse or the sell signal to be nullified. Anytime you see these giant reversal candles, uh, it marks a uh, a sell signal and you want to watch it and as long as price doesn't uh, take out that top uh, then you're gonna see more downside and so you see back here in April late March and early April we actually had one that got retraced and engulfed the next day uh, and then the second one that happened we never saw uh, that get retraced uh, obviously it took until into May for us to get back above that um, and I thought that was interesting because we barely got above it uh, for a couple of days and then had that giant reversal today. Uh, or I'm sorry, so, I mean, by all accounts, this could and maybe arguably should uh, keep going down. Uh, but the only problem with that is that now, uh, with that thesis, is that now we've got this uh, bullish engulfing candle, which has happened because of the uh, price action uh, in the last again in the last 20 minutes it's it's wild to say that um, like how much 20 minutes of uh, time uh, the difference that that makes in looking at this chart uh, because it, without that 20 minutes uh, let me see if I can get this uh, without that 20 minutes you're looking at uh, you're looking at prices closing right about there um, and so it may, you would have had this giant wick but like if you notice like more than half of this candle uh would not have would not have existed um so 
I mean, it, it, that's that's the importance that 20 minutes of market time can make can mean um, intraday at least. And so, uh, so anyway, it just it just makes it a lot harder to interpret. I mean, my my inkling is to say that this uh, that that signal is really really strong to the upside, so you shouldn't be looking for shorts uh, anymore. Uh, and so now, if I try to arrange the, if I try to put a, a line here, uh, this doesn't exactly work. I mean, it, it, I don't like that the, there was a closing wick on May first here, or a closing a close below this line on May first. Um, but if you go off of this view, I mean, it's a it's a perfect touch right there, and the uptrend is still intact, and you're still getting higher a higher high, uh, a higher low, uh, and all that. Um, and so this suggests that markets are going to keep going higher. Um, and so that's kind of the, the look right now. I mean, you can also see here the VIX got crushed today um, down uh, a total of, let's see, a total of, what is this, 3.52%. Uh, that doesn't seem right. Oh, it's because that's the VIX futures. I'm sorry. Uh, it's different futures. Uh, so the VIX was actually down 10, uh, over 10% today, nearly 11%. Uh, and if you look at it on the 10 minute chart, um, well, let's look at it on, on the hour chart. Just in that last hour uh, today, uh, you know, six, almost 7% of that, of that drop was just in the last hour. So VIX crush, a uh, really, really wild day uh, here. Um, pretty much par for the course. Uh, we, we see this a lot. There are a lot of occasions where you see uh, late in the week VIX crushes. Um, and so obviously when the VIX goes down, I mean, like here we are closing back down below 13 again. Um, in these kinds of environments, when the VIX is that low, it's, it's positive. If it's net positive for risk assets. So that was a big deal. I did think it was interesting. The dollar uh, touched uh, the trend line here um, and is uh, so far uh, actually closed well off of its lows. Um, so I think that's interesting. Um, the 10 year down the last two days but still making higher lows um, we'll see kind of what happens um, I kind of thought this would be down a lot more on the PCE uh, today down 4.8 basis points and um, you know not not as not as big a thing as I would have as I would have thought given the the data that we got um, so that's interesting uh, what's what else is interesting is that um, Bitcoin I think when, when when you have these kinds of situations when the markets are uncertain uh, or when you have crazy wild movements happening, uh, to me one of the most important things you can do is look at other risk assets uh, in different uh, asset classes, uh, pay attention to the correlations and things like that. And one of the things that is interesting to me is that despite the strength in the equities at the end of the day, uh, you still had Bitcoin closing down. Uh, I mean, it's it's down right now. It doesn't close for a couple hours, but it's down. And I mean, it could by by the time this video is posted in a few hours before it's before the close, it could be uh, green again. But uh, it, it is not moving in the same way that equities did. Although it did bottom around uh, the same time. Uh, but it is interesting to note uh, that uh, so it did have a similar rise. Let me see. During that period of time, uh, it closed up, you know, 0.23 percent. Um, it was up that much in that 20 minutes, uh, but not seeing the same kind of uh, general recovery that you saw on uh, the S&P 500. So that's interesting um, that that didn't happen. Uh, metals were still down today, very strongly, uh, which there. This is something that we were talking about earlier, and that was that. It's weird on the on the PCE, which came in at or maybe even like uh, better than what was expected, uh, meaning more favorable, more dovish than what was expected. I would have expected on economic weakness for gold to go up uh, or silver, not maybe not necessarily silver, definitely gold. And then a lot of people were talking about geopolitical issues uh, with, you know, um, Putin. I think there was the Biden administration talking about they were going to allow potentially allow Ukraine to use weapons inside Russia, like American weapons inside Russia. You had Putin come out making comments, I guess, about, uh, you know, preparing to like being prepared to use nuclear or their nuclear arsenal if they wanted to. 
And you would think that that would be enough to make gold go up, but because a lot of people were saying earlier in the day that that's why the S and P was you know down intraday uh, was because of geopolitical conflict. Uh, but then you would have thought that gold would have been up much higher, and it wasn't. Uh, and frankly, the metals across the board, if I go to the futures, uh, the metals across the board, um, not a super great week. I mean, silver had, I think, let me see if I go on the weekly chart. Uh, silver was down on the week. Silver had, oh, gold had the best week. Uh, copper, out of those metals, copper had the worst week, which uh, I flagged that. And I talk about that in my newsletter uh, more recently. Um, but again, it's it's just interesting because um, metals were down, um, crude oil down, right? So just a lot of things that you would have thought, like risk assets that would have taken off if the market was truly uh, going more risk on. Uh, there's just different things that indicate that, or that, that should have been, that should have gone different. Uh, anyway. Uh, what are some other things we can look at? Um, if I turn on my tide indicator, uh, look, you can see crude oil is about to cross bearish. Uh, one thing that I like to look at is uh, the S&P versus utilities. Utilities are one of the more significant defensive sectors. Uh, today, we just got a bearish tide cross on utilities uh, or on SPY versus utilities. And the reason why that's important is if you just look at the most recent time that happened, it was early February of 2022, right before the long bear market in that year um, it, and before anyone goes accusing me of, of uh, suggesting that oh the markets must keep going down because of that uh, let's see so in February 2020 it crossed as well um, in uh, October 2018 it crossed uh, so those three occasions um, were right on the right at the beginning of um, uh, was I going to say? I'm sorry. Uh, right, right ahead of bear markets, uh, market drops. I mean, the uh, 2022 bear market was down more than 20%. Uh, you know, the March, February 2020 crash, uh, COVID-related crash was down 20, 30%. Uh, in October through December, the Q4 Christmas massacre, 2018 was uh, was minus 20%. There are occasions where it crosses and nothing happens. Uh, so you, th this, that's obviously uh, a thing too. Back in 2017, it did it a couple of times, uh, 2015, 2016. And so all that's to say, like it, it can cross and it doesn't necessarily have to mean downside. I did a study on this. Um, what, what I, what I tended to find in, uh, the back test on this was that, uh, when you get these crosses, uh, it's, it's. I think about 40 to 45 percent of the time it actually does lead to downside uh, and when the downside happens it's relatively severe uh, on average and at the median um, and what is also true is that when you get those crosses equities tend to underperform other asset classes so my guess if this is gonna if history is gonna repeat or rhyme it's that this uh, cross is going to suggest that equities are going to underperform at, at the very minimum underperform other asset classes on a relative basis uh, for the time being um, not a guarantee obviously nothing is guaranteed not not financial advice and make sure you do your own research but I did want to be I did want everyone to be aware of that uh, another thing that I thought was interesting was to note that despite the movement in markets today the high beta low beta ratio was down. Uh, it's actually closing below its control uh, current line. And so I think that that's interesting because if this starts to turn over, uh, that's often a sign that uh, not good things are about to come. Um, and we don't want that. Oops, that's the wrong thing I wanted to look at. Oops. Um, and then another thing I wanted to, to note uh, is the breadth indicators. We got a nearly 20% positive move in the breadth indicator today. It, the short-term momentum is um, back above 50 on the close today. Uh, I think that that's interesting uh, because, and we did not get that favorable of a close. I mean, the, it's, the candle looks good, but it, it's not above 50 on the NASDAQ, so that's interesting. It is above 50 on the Russell and above 50 on the Dow. Uh, 
and the Russell 3000, which is you know 95%, maybe 95% of the stock market is is uh, is also above 50. So that's notable. That's a that's a really a notable sign as well. Uh, something that you want to pay attention to uh, going ahead. Um, so the market is the, the situation is very very uncertain in markets right now. Um, frankly, based on the price action today, uh, I'm inclined to think that. You know, we're just going to keep going higher. Uh, you know, um, I reserve the right to be wrong. Uh, on the futures, we were uh, we did end up closing down on the week. Uh, if I go to SPY, we closed down on the week, uh, and that is, you know, in my newsletter I talk about this kind of stuff. I that's what I mentioned uh, from last week was that uh, from this last newsletter was that this week would be a down week. It's pretty amazing to think. Again, it's it's one of those things. Uh, what could have been different um, if you know we didn't get that that huge move today? This candle would have been a lot lower. It would have looked a lot more dire. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? Um, we're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, we are heading now into June. June is lower uh, volume time, and so the market can move uh, all kinds of crazy. Um, there, like I said uh, at the beginning of the video, there's the old adage that the uh, there's the whole sell in May go away thing that happens. But uh, I mean, if you look at not every summer is like that. If you look at uh, at this particular point last year, um, if we go to uh, May 31st last year on the close there, uh, we we still you know before the end of July, like by the end of July, we were up almost 10 percent. Uh, so two months of time, uh, and we were up 10% almost uh, before we got that late uh, correction that went into uh, that went into the fall last year. Uh, so it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, obviously, you could go back to uh, you know even in the 2022 bear market. If we go from uh, this spot, the close of uh, May 31st of 2022, uh, you know we still were up into August. Um, by 3.58 percent before we got the next leg down of the uh, of the bear market. So uh, and then of course you go back to 2021. It's just laughable uh, because when you go to uh, let's see, you go to the last uh, day of May and you go you know all the way through the summer to if you go to the end of August up seven percent. Um, you know in uh, 2020. We'll do this again. Go from. Sorry about this. May to the end of August, you we were you were up fourteen percent. So, uh, the markets can move pretty substantially uh, during the summertime. So I think that that's something uh, to be aware of. And, and even just thinking out loud about it right now makes me wonder if one of the things that's happened today is. Uh, people are positioning for the lower volume of the summer of the summertime now, uh, thinking that we'll go higher. And, and we, we could. And again, like I said, my inclination is that we'll probably go higher. Uh, but again, that uh, th the cross on the X, uh, SPY XLU uh, ratio is concerning to me. Um, it's uh, obviously not something that I'm just going to go short the stock market because of. Uh, but I do want to be aware of the possibility of um, that uh, that the markets are are uh, gonna that the at least the equity markets are gonna underperform for a little bit, um, and I think maybe the question I want to leave you with is the question of why. I mean, the, the Fed's talking about cutting, but if you think about what's happened in the last uh, just in the last month, we got a softer payrolls report, uh, we got a softer CPI, we got a softer PCE, uh, the GDP report was revised lower. Jobless claims have uh, been higher than expectations uh, more of the weeks in the month of May than not. Um, so is the potential is the reason that the Fed is concerned about cutting and basically not allowing the possibility of rate hikes in the future? Is that because they're seeing the slowdown and they're afraid of the slowdown? Are the markets not seeing it? I think that that's something that we have to at least be aware of. So I'll stop the video there. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys had a great month, and I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you guys next time.